Hello, and welcome to Core 3 Forbidden's video tutorial on Auto IT Scripting, Part 11. In this tutorial, I'm going to be going over a more advanced section of Auto IT, networking. Networking in Auto IT is fairly more advanced than the stuff that we've gone over, but not necessarily difficult to learn. If you look in the Auto IT help file, the only thing that's confusing is which, is which functions to use before which other ones. In this tutorial, I'm just going to be going over TCP type networking, as opposed to UDP, because TCP seems to be a little bit easier. If you want to be doing anything with TCP networking, first you have to do the command TCP startup, which, as it says, starts TCP or UDP services. So let's go ahead and type that in. There. So now, TCP networking functions have started. Now. We're going to go ahead and make something where we send an amount of data to a server, and the server tells us something back. But for that, we're going to need a server and a client. In this part, we're just going to make the client. If you look in the Auto IT help documentation, the first thing we need to do is TCP connect, which, as it says, creates a socket connecting, connected to an existing server, which basically means it connects to a server. So, let's go ahead and type that in. First, we have to put in the IP address. Since we're just going to be doing local networking, from my computer to my computer, and not to anyone else, we're just going to use a macro, which starts with an at sign. A macro is the same as a variable, except its data is stable. And if you look in the help documentation, under macro reference, it has, uh, as it says, an alphabetized list of all the macros available in AutoIT. Some of them consist of AutoIT EXE, which is the full path and file name of the AutoIT executable currently running, and lots of other ones. In this one, we're going to look in the system info macros, and we're going to get at IP address 1, which is the IP address of the first network adapter. It tends to return 127.0.0.1 on some computers, usually if it's just not connected to anything. So, we're just going to do that. Right now I am connected to a network, and my IP address is 192.168.1.97. So that is what at IP address 1 is going to return to the TCP connect function. The next parameter needed is the port that is opened on the existing server. For this tutorial, we're going to just use port 403. For later functions that we're going to be using, we need to capture the return value of TCP connect and store it into a variable. If, again, you look in the help documentation, the normal return value is the main socket identifier. It's sort of like the amount of data that gets returned when you create a GUI. It's just like an ID. So, let's go back into our script and add a variable. There, we'll just call it TCP connect. By the way, I forgot to mention this in previous tutorials. Variables, it does not matter what case they are in. Capital TCPC and then Annect, or capital TCP and lowercase connect, whatever it is, it will not matter. It will this that the variable will hold the same amount of data, no matter what case it's in. So what this will do is connect to the server and return the ID into dollar sign TCP connect. After this, we have a couple more steps to do. We say if $TCPConnect equals negative 1, then exit the script. This is because in the help documentation for AutoIT, it will return negative 1 on a failure. What this will do is if it does not connect, which basically means if the server is not running, then it will exit the script. What we do now is the TCP send function. What this does is sends an amount of data to a socket, in this case the socket that was opened by the TCP connect function. So we take the identifier that is in the variable TCP connect and put it in as the main socket parameter. The next parameter is the data, which is the data that we're going to send. In this case, we are going to send the data hello. At this point, that is the finish of this script. Now we're going to start creating the server in the next section of the tutorial part 11.1. I'll see you in the next tutorial.